The initial 53-man roster is set for the Jets, but don't get too attached to it. We'll discuss today on Locked On Jets. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. This is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Wednesday, August 30th, 2023, and I'm your host, John B. from GangGreenNation.com. Thank you for making the show your first listen or first watch every day. Subscribe to the show for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so that you'll get new episodes as soon as they're posted. If you're listening on a podcast source and enjoy the show, please give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube and enjoy the show, give this episode a big thumbs up. Helps us out, helps other Jets fans find the podcast. Today's episode of Locked on Jets is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. Terms and conditions apply. Well, we have the initial 53-man roster for the Jets. The cutdown day was yesterday. The Jets cut, trimmed their roster from 90 to 53, and that's what we'll talk about today. Now, I say this every year, but it especially applies this year. Don't go crazy over what happened on cutdown day because the roster is going to change between 4 o'clock yesterday and the week one game between the Jets and the Buffalo Bills. Usually there's some tinkering around the roster, and I know for a fact this year the roster is going to change. Well, how do I know that? Well, the, J the Jets currently don't have a punter on their roster. So let me go out on a limb and say that the Jets are going to have a punter by week one against Buffalo. Um, it's a move cutting Thomas Morstead yesterday. It's the type of move that you see from time to time across the league. And I've talked about this yesterday. So if you're an everyday or you know all about this, players with less than four years of experience have to pass through what's known as the waiver process, which means that the other 31 teams all have a chance to claim them. And if another team claims a player with less than four years of experience who's been cut, they get him. Players with more than four years of experience become free agents. So they essentially need to agree to join a new team. So sometimes what happens in a situation like this is a team like the Jets may be still deciding between two players and they, you know, they want to take a few more days to make their decision. Or, you know, they may need to like have a player on the initial 53 man roster to move him to an inactive list, like an injured list or something like that. So sometimes what happens is if you need an extra spot because you need a little bit of time to maneuver, you go to a veteran player and just say, hey, we're going to cut you. Just re you'll you agree to resign with us in a couple of days. So that's what happened with Thomas Morstead. So technically, the Jets don't have a punter right now. But if you saw the roster, relax. Morstead actually posted on social social media that he's going to resign with the team. It's just a, it's a kind of an accounting move. It's a housekeeping move, gives the Jets an extra roster spot to play with for a couple of days. Also a running back fullback, Nick Bodden reports are the same things happening with him where the Jets cut him yesterday, technically, but they're going to bring him back. So this is a very preliminary 53 man roster, but let's go through it. Let's start with the offense and the Jets kept two quarterbacks on the initial roster, Aaron Rodgers, Zach Wilson, yeah, I can make a really bad joke about it being a shock Aaron Rodgers is on the roster, but I won't. I'll spare you that that uh, poor, poor attempt at humor. We also knew Zach Wilson would be there. A bit of a surprise as Tim Boyle gets cut. I thought he had kind of solidified his, his chances to be the number three quarterback. The Jets don't have a number three quarterback right now. I would expect that to change uh, because the NFL has a new rule this year. Again, if you're an everyday or you've heard me talk about this over the last couple of weeks where you can – dress a quarterback on game day to be your number three quarterback, who's essentially the emergency quarterback. He does not count against the 47 to 48 players you're allowed to have active on game day. And he can go in a doomsday scenario if anything happened to Rodgers and Wilson, where they both got injured in the same game and at least allow you to run a, a shell of your offense. So I don't know what's going to happen yet. It could be a situation where Tim Boyle returns to the team in the, in the next couple of days. It could be a situation where they park him on the practice squad for a couple of weeks because you can activate practice squad players for a couple of weeks before you need to put them on the 53-man 53, 53 roster. So it could be a situation where Boyle goes to the practice squad. And he, for the first couple of weeks of the season, maybe they'll activate him on game day and they'll get him ready. Uh, and then you know, a few weeks down the line, they'll uh, they'll put, give Boyle a roster spot. Or it could be that they may be interested in another quarterback. I think Bailey Zappi of New England, who was a surprise cut, I think he'd be a good guy for the Jets to put in a waiver claim on as a number three quarterback. But at the moment, the Jets only have 
two quarterbacks on the roster. I expect that to change. I think that with the third quarterback rule, with the opportunity to have an emergency quarterback through the season, it just makes sense to have a third quarterback available to you. So I would be surprised if the Jets had two quarterbacks through most, most of the season, because essentially you're, you're wasting a free roster spot and you're wasting an opportunity to give yourself some insurance against injury. So again, I'm not panicked. The Jets cut Tim Boyle, but I do think they'll probably end up with a third quarterback at some point down the line. Uh, Jets kept four running backs, Dalvin Cook, Brees Hall, Izzy Abanaconda, Michael Carter. No great surprise there. You knew of the three young running backs, Abanaconda, Carter, and Bam Knight, somebody was going and Jets made that decision pretty early. Uh, on, it was actually on Monday that they decided to cut Bam Knight. So Nick Bodden will be joining the team, according to reports. Jets again cut Bodden. He was, was going to be the fullback to kind of give themselves an extra roster spot for a couple of days to allow themselves to maneuver a little bit. So there will eventually be a fifth running back in, in the mix here. But those are the four guys. And of these four, I think Michael Carter is the guy who's kind of on notice right now because Dalvin Cook was signed in part, I think, because the Jets don't have a ton of confidence in Carter. Brees Hall is the guy at running back. I mean, if Brees is healthy, he's one of the best running backs in the NFL. I, I say that despite him only having seven games of experience. Uh, Brees Hall's phenomenal. And then Izzy Abanaconda was a recent draft pick. So of these of these four guys, Michael Carter you know, could be on notice here. I mean, it's not a guarantee Michael Carter makes it all the way through the season. Now we move to the wide receiver position. This is an interesting one because the Jets kept seven. They kept Garrett Wilson, obviously, Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, both guys with, who have a history with Aaron Rodgers, Nicole Hardman, who got a moderate free agent contract from the team. Corey Davis is gone. The Jets actually kept three guys who were undrafted players, either rookies or considered first-year players. And if you ever hear a guy who's a first-year player, the distinction between that and a rookie is that a first-year player could be on the practice squad. But because he was on the practice squad last year, he technically doesn't have a year of experience in the NFL, but he's not a rookie because he had it's kind of a weird thing the NFL does. So you have Jason Brownlee, who was one of the stars of training camp, Xavier Gibson, who looked pretty good in the preseason, and then Irv Charles. And I talked about this a little while back when Corey Davis retired last week, that the retirement of Davis hurts the Jets because I think he was a player they were really counting on. But in a way, it helps them a bit because – when you're talking long-term, if you have three guys you're trying to develop, asking one of these three guys to develop into a player and using those practice reps that way, it's not a bad way to use them. And it gives you a real opportunity. If you just have like one developmental player, the odds of that guy turning good, becoming good in the NFL, not that great. If you need one out of three, I think you actually do have a fighting chance. Now, I think of these three, Irv Charles is the guy I think is least likely because he's already 26 years old. He's already kind of older. And I, I actually kind of wonder whether this might be a special teams move because I don't think there's a ton of upside with Irv Charles. So I look at this and I think maybe Brant Boyer wants him for some sort of role. Maybe he's going to be a gunner. Maybe he'll he'll have some sort of special teams role on, because it's kind of odd to keep seven receivers, especially like a 26-year-old guy without a ton of upside like Irv Charles, unless he's going to play a key role for you on special teams. So he's also a guy who very likely a candidate to be uh, one of the players who's cut to make room for bought in or Morstead. So worth watching though, but the jets kind of loading up with developmental receivers and not a, I, I, I like it. I, I don't dislike it. Now at tight end, you've got Tyler Conklin, CJ Uzama, Jeremy Ruckert and Kenny Yeboa. Zach Koontz gets cut a bit of a surprise, a mild surprise, especially for Yeboa, who's really not shown much the couple of years he's been in the NFL. Kuntz is a guy who had out of this world athletic testing. I think there's a little bit of trepidation in the fan base because expect for a seventh round pick expectations are pretty high for Zach Kuntz, but he's a guy who's really raw. In fact, the only notable play he made in the preseason was a touchdown where he ran the wrong route. So a guy who has a lot of work to do, is he going to be subject to a waiver claim? A lot of Jets fans are worried about it, but he was a seventh round pick. You know, teams passed on him, and he did not show a whole lot in the preseason. And even if he is claimed, I'm look, it's a seventh-round pick. The odds are against him turning into a player. And I think it's one of those things where you could do worse than just betting on a big-time athletic profile in the seventh round. I, I don't hate the strategy in general, but you have to acknowledge it's probably not going to work. So even if Kuntz is claimed, I'm not sure he's going to be claimed. It's not the end of the world because the odds are kind of against him just as they are against any seventh round pick. And then finally, the Jets keep 10 offensive linemen. So you have Dwayne Brown, Lakin Tomlinson, Connor McGovern, Elijah Vera Tucker, and Makai Becton, your five starters to go with Joe Tipman, the rookie out of Wisconsin, Max Mitchell, second year guy out of Louisiana, Billy Turner, Wes Schweitzer, and Carter Warren. 
10's a lot. It's it's that's a lot of linemen to keep, especially when your team's not all that deep on the offensive line. You know, I, I wonder a bit if you know, I wonder a bit sometimes when you're talking team building strategy, however, whether it makes sense to keep 10 linemen, because if you keep 10 linemen, you can almost have each lineman learn one specific position. A lot of, a lot of times you're, you're a backup lineman need to be versatile, need to play multiple positions. If you have 10, that means you have one backup for each spot. Now the jets do have three of these, three of these linemen who are really tackles in Max Mitchell, Billy Turner and Carter Warren. So maybe you rule that out, but Jets keep 10 offensive linemen. That could be a spot where, again, 10's a lot. And unless you want to like have one back, a duo, like a one to one thing, one backup for each starter, that could be a, another spot where you see maybe somebody go to make room for a bot in or a Morstead or a third quarterback. Now, head here on the Locked On Jets podcast. We'll turn our attention to the defensive side of the ball. I don't think there are a lot of surprises. I think it's there were one or two moves that I think maybe raised some eyebrows. And we'll talk about them continuing this Wednesday edition of the Locked On Jets podcast. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. You know, these this these days, each new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. The Jets have a full scouting staff. They may be ma- placing waiver claims today, trying to fill some of their needs. I mean, the wide receiver room could probably use a boost, so could the offensive line. You probably don't have... A scouting staff though for your team that's where linkedin jobs comes in it's easy to create a free job post then add add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your linkedin profile to spread the word that you're hiring simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire this is why small businesses rate linkedin jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors linkedin jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen or first watch every day. And a big shout out to you every day. This is a daily podcast covering the Jets new episodes each day, Monday through Friday through the week. And then bonus episodes as needed. We're breaking down the initial 53-man roster for the Jets. Operative word being initial. There will be changes. And I know that. I say that every year, but I especially mean it this year because the Jets don't have a punter on their roster right now. So I think we can probably surmise that there are going to be some changes. I imagine by week one against Buffalo, the Jets will have a punter, so relax. Don't don't panic over the lack of a punter. Maybe they'll just go for it on every, every fourth down with Aaron Rodgers. Maybe they just say Aaron's our guy. No, uh, Thomas Morstead has said the Jets will be back. But let's turn our attention to the defensive side of the ball. No great surprise at defensive end. Uh, Jets keep six, and the six you would expect. Carl Lawson, John Franklin Myers, Bryce Huff, Jermaine Johnson, Will McDonald, Michael Clemens. Really solid group. I mentioned this yesterday. If you're an everyday or you know it. The Jets don't maybe maybe don't have an elite defensive end, but they have very good defensive ends. And I, I described this yesterday that typical elite defensive end position, you're gonna get like you're gonna have like one star and he'll play like maybe 70 to 80 percent of the snaps. So you'll get like 70 to 80 percent of the snaps will be dominant, and then the other 20 to 30 percent will just be okay. The Jets may not have any dominant players at the defensive end position, but they have a bunch of very good players. So instead of like 70% dominant, 30% okay, you're going to get 100% very good. And I think that adds up to roughly the same thing. You're just going to keep sending guys in, keep coming. They look great. I mean, this looks like a really good, and it's music to my ears. Uh, Much of the history of lockdown Jets has been me lamenting over the lack of quality pass rushers the Jets have had through the Mike McCagnan era and then maybe the early Joe Douglas era. We've built this pass rush up. We've got some good defensive ends, so that's good. Defensive tackle, again, no surprise. Quinton Williams, Quinton Jefferson, Al Woods, Solomon Thomas. Not as good. Um, Quinton Williams is great. Quinton Williams is the one great player on this defensive line. After that, you kind of mix and match. You've got Jefferson, who's more of a pass rush specialist. You have Woods, who the rare player on the Robert Sala defensive line who's kind of a run stopper, a traditional nose tackle type, and the Jets are trying to squeeze one more good year out of him. And then Solomon Thomas, who 
I guess the coaching staff likes because he knows the system. And, I, you know, you could also see John Franklin Myers and Michael Clemens get some snaps on the inside, even though they're technically listed as defensive ends. So a group that's got some question marks after Quinn, but it has the, it has the best players. So this is kind of the opposite of defensive end where, you know, defensive end, you don't maybe know, don't get any dominant snaps. We get a lot of very good snaps A defensive tackle. You get the dominant snaps of Quinn and Williams and then a bunch of okay, but no real surprises there with who the jets keep at the linebacker position. There was some competition here. Uh, CJ Mosley, Quincy Williams, and Jamie and Sherwood, I think entered training camp as the guys who were the sure bets to make the roster. And then late round pick Zaire Barnes and Chaz Surratt, who had a strong preseason uh, win the last two linebacker spots. Uh, it's spot, the position where the Jets maybe aren't great, but they're not terrible. Uh, Surratt looked really good, especially in the, the game against the Browns where he had that interception. So it, 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 I think the Jets are still kind of looking for their cover linebacker. Sherwood was okay in preseason. He, he didn't really show that he had, he had mastered the Quan Alexander role, but I think he'll have the first crack at it. Maybe Surratt will get an opportunity himself. The Jets end up keeping five linebackers, though. At corner, the Jets keep four guys. Now, with one caveat that Brandon Eccles is on the suspended list to start the season. So he, so when a player is suspended, he does not count against the 53-man roster. However, once Eccles' suspension, he's, and he's suspended the first game of the season, once Eccles' suspension ends, the Jets will need to make a spot for him or they'll need to cut him. And I, I don't think they'll cut him. I think they like him as a depth player. I think that the the corner, the headline is that Bryce Hall makes the team because he had a miserable preseason after what was not a good season last year. Um, you know, he had a rough preseason a year ago. And then the first game of the season, he got beat for a touchdown. He was such, that was the end of Bryce Hall. I mean, he, got, he started getting deactivated for games. It's really difficult for me to understand what happened to him. I mean, maybe we overestimated what he was doing because the rest of the Jets corners were so bad in 2021. And you know, maybe he got a little bit too much buzz about being a shutdown corner or a number one corner, which he really was not. But he looked like a credible player. At worst, he looked like decent depth. And this is going to be interesting because it, when Eccles returns, will Bryce Hall have a spot on this team? I tend to think yes, because I think generally speaking, you're going to want to keep five corners most weeks. I think the Jets may view week one as we can get through with four. Uh, but Bryce Hall, I can't believe we're at the point where I was even wondering whether he'd make the roster. He does, though, as the fourth and final corner. Then we move to the safety position. This is actually a really interesting spot. So Jarek Barnard, uh, Jarek Bernard Converse, who was a late round pick, is on the physically unable to perform list. So he'll be out the first four weeks of the season. And the physically unable to perform list, that's actually something that you're play. It's a list you're placed on at the start of training camp if you're not ready to play because you're injured. And you can come off at, at any time during training camp. But once training camp ends, you either if you stay on the list to the start of the season, you don't count against the 53 man roster. However, you can't, you have to sit out the first four weeks. So Bernard Converse is out. The Jets keep four safeties. And I think this is really the the one that's raising eyebrows. If to the extent there's something raising eyebrows on defense, uh, it's this. Uh, Tony Adams, Adrian Amos, Jordan Whitehead, and Ashton Davis. And the reason that this is drawing um, headlines is Ashton Davis keeping his spot over a guy who looked really good at the safety position in preseason, Trey Dean, who probably has more upside than Davis. I think this is a Brant Boyer move. I think that when you're talking about your number four safety, you're talking about a guy you're not expecting to be on the field much. Part of this, the, I think if the Jets are gambling, they can get Trey Dean onto the practice squad. He looked good in the preseason and the Jets are rolling the dice here because they did this exact same thing last year with Jason Pinnock and they ended up losing him to the Giants and Pinnock ended up carving out a role on the Giants. So, Jets are rolling. This is, ex I think it was the same situation. I think the Jets were trying to keep Ashton Davis on the team because they liked what he did on special teams. And Davis plays a lot of different special teams roles for this team. He's the personal protector on the punt, uh, on the punt team. He plays a bunch of other special teams roles. I think it's a Brant Boyer move. And I, as I always say, at the bottom of the roster, you're not, you're not going to play your natural position much if you're buried deep on the depth chart. Where you can carve out a role is on special teams. And I think Ashton Davis. It, look, Ashton Davis, I'll say this, is one of the worst safeties I've ever seen play in the NFL, but he's kind of found a role uh, as a special teamer for this team, and he's once again earned a roster spot. We'll see whether the Jets can can 
sneak Trey Dean onto the practice squad. They failed a year ago with Jason Pinnock. Will this year be different? We'll find out. We'll find out by the end of the day. Now, head here on the Lockdown Jets podcast. We will close out this Wednesday episode, and we'll turn our attention to special teams, a couple guys to keep an eye on, and, of course, one move left to make there. That's as we continue this Wednesday edition of the Locked On Jets podcast. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on this Wednesday. We've talked offense. We've talked defense as far as the roster goes. There are only three players who are special teamers for the Jets on the initial 53-man roster. There is the kicker, Greg Zorline. There is the long snapper, Thomas Hennessy. And then I, I'm also including Justin Hardy in this mix. And I, I always include Justin Hardy as a special teamer because even though he's technically listed as a corner, he's not really a corner. And I don't even think like the Jets would ever consider playing him at the corner position. I think it would be one of those situations. It would almost be like an emergency situation where he'd play corner. The Jets have no desire to play Justin Hardy at his natural position. So I know like there are backups here who will play big roles on special teams. You know, I've mentioned a couple of them, Ashton Davis being one of them, but the Jets will play Ashton Davis at safety if they have injuries. The only way Justin Hardy plays is if the Jets are just decimated by injuries at, at the corner position. It's it's almost like an emergency move, like you'd play a wide receiver at corner if you if you ran out of bodies. Like it's it's uh, it's in that ballpark. So that's why I would categorize Justin Hardy a little bit differently. I know some people some people will list the roster and they'll have five corners. They'll, Justin Hardy will be the fifth corner. I don't know. I, I don't think Justin Hardy's ever going to play corner for this football team unless they they're just absolutely desperate. Justin Hardy, though, is a good player, and I think Justin Hardy is one of the more underrated Jets among the league leaders last year in, in uh, tackles, on punt coverage, guy who plays all across all the units. In fact, if you go back to 2021, he was one of the first players the Jets signed that offseason. It was because the Jets had a disastrous special teams year in 2020, and they felt that they needed to upgrade their special teams units. So they went out and got Justin Hardy, who's the special teams ace with the New Orleans Saints, and through two years, he's done pretty well. You know, He actually was a pro bowler last year but a really solid player at kicker, Greg Zerline, the Jets. Finally, Joe Douglas finally gets a kicker with experience. I've said, I've said this for years. It, the easiest thing you should be able to do in the, as an NFL team is find a competent kicker because there's always a good kicker available just sitting out there on the market. If for whatever reason, the Jets just pull these inexperienced guys out there. They did it for years with Joe Douglas when there are always proven kickers available on the market, every single, like no matter what point you're at in the NFL calendar, there's always going to be a proven kicker available who's good. And the Jets finally figured that out last year with Greg Zorline after some success with Eddie Pinheiro at the end of 2021. But Greg Zorline, glad to have him as the kicker. And then Thomas Hennessy. I feel like the long snapper is the most popular player on the team because very rare the long snapper does anything wrong. Thomas Hennessy, long tenured Jet, been really solid for this team for for a number of years, following this proud tradition of Tanner Purdom before him, James Durth before him. Uh, good long snapper. You know you don't have to worry about Thomas Hennessy. So that that wraps it up. And then Thomas Morstead will be back with the team, even though he's not technically on the fifty three man roster. As I said at the outset of the show, Jets essentially cut Morstead and kind of a handshake deal. Some and you see this from time to time in the, the NFL on cut down day give the team an extra roster spot, a few extra days to figure out what they're doing with a spot or two. So Thomas Morstead will be back with the team. And he already announced that on social media. He, he preemptively made a social media post yesterday to prevent Jets fans from panicking because they, some fans saw that the team had lacked a punter after cutting Morstead. Uh, Morstead will be back at some point. We'll see what the corresponding move is to make. And now, now we look to today because today the waiver, the initial waiver claims will be announced by the league. Uh, players that were cut yesterday were subject to the waiver process. The biggest day of waiver activity in the NFL. We'll see whether the Jets make a move or two. We'll see whether any of the players the Jets cut get claimed. Last year, the number of the players the Jets cut actually were claimed. Uh, so we'll see what happens. And then unclaimed players can begin signing with the practice squad. So you'll start to see the practice squad populate today uh, once players clear waivers and become free agents. And then any free agents free to sign with the practice squad. So we'll see what happens there. But that's all for today's episode. This has been the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. As always, if you enjoy the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast for us, please give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube, give this episode a big thumbs up. These things help us out, help other Jets fans find the show. Hope you have a great Wednesday. Everybody will be back tomorrow to talk more Jets. 